highest and uh, and so we come out midday and we thought we'd be there all night to this bank of microphones and the first question was aren't you Muslim mm hmm I mean no, but let me ask you when you heard that question were you not prepared for it? Did it really shock you to hear somebody ask you that question? Yes, I was shocked. I was surprised. I thought they were going to ask me how come the endorsement process was so quick. I thought they were going to ask me how did I get enough votes to be able to, to prevail. I thought they were going to ask me what issues did I argue to the delegates mm -hmm. to persuade them to support me. Mm -hmm. I even thought if there was going to be sort of a uh, odd question. I thought it was going to have to do with race, you know, mm -hmm. because the district's only 10% um, black, you know, people of African descent. And so I thought that there were going to be a question along those lines, but I didn't expect a religious question, and mm -hmm. yet uh, that was the question. So, you know, I, I said something about how America is a country of uh, religious pluralism and diversity and tolerance, and how the very foundations of this country were about people of various faiths wanting to come worship as they pleased. I talked about um, uh, how uh, John F. Kennedy in 1960 became the first Catholic and the country is, you know, better off for it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and still, you know, uh, the, the questions didn't subside. They just got and more intense and more frequent. But Congressman, let me ask you, after you left that bank of microphones that night and went home, did that question kind of still run in your mind? Aren't you Muslim? It ran in my mind, but I can tell you that it didn't occur to me why it was such a big deal. Mm -hmm. I simply did not appreciate the fact that it was important mm -hmm. because I really don't see myself, when I think of myself, I don't think of myself within a racial or even a religious context because mm -hmm. my, my self-concept as a Muslim is not in opposition to anyone else. Mm -hmm. When I think of myself as a Muslim, I think of myself as a person in submission to the divine. Mm -hmm in obedience to the divine, in, in obedience to, to God, you know, the maker of all, the sustainer of all, you know, and so I don't think of myself as a person who is in, in opposition to people of other faiths, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think of myself that way. That's not my self-concept. So I was a little, it did take me maybe 30 days before I truly thought to myself, wow, you know, me being endorsed and having a good chance to go to Congress is kind of like a Japanese person being elected to Congress a few years after Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, it, it is a big deal. It is, it is out, of, out of the ordinary. It, it is something that uh, I have to slow down and, and try to absorb mm -hmm. because, quite frankly, I was of the mind that, wow, what's, that, what's the big deal? Why is everybody excited about this? Mm -hmm. But from that point, I mean, from that one question, after that, the rhetoric became quite intense. Oh, you yeah. You know, about you being a Muslim and what Islam stands for and who is this guy who's trying to run for Congress and he's Muslim. So how did you deal with that? And after the uh, election, did you find that some of that rhetoric had started to subside? Well, you know, um, you know the, the, how did I deal with it? As I said, there got to be a point where every single day something about me and my religion was uh, you know, either in the news or in the blogs or was coming up, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and it, it was at that point that I, I actually had a spiritual development, you know, mm -hmm. where I became to more thoroughly understand that there is no God but God and that you have no refuge, no protector, no sustainer, no intervener, no intercessor except God and that no friend, no family member can, can, can keep you from the hardship when it's coming your way, mm -hmm. you know, and you just have to uh, have faith and, and keep on, you know, putting your best foot forward mm -hmm. and, and, and pray a lot. Right, right. And in terms of, of prayer, I mean, here when you're in your office, do you have places where you can pray here? Are you able to get halal food here and things like that? Well, I like pray that? right here where we're sitting. You right. know, I got my prayer rug right mm -hmm. in the closet or somewhere around so here. So in this building, like, you're the only Muslim here? No, Andre Carson is a Muslim. Okay, I'm sorry. You know, is... and so, you know, um, but, you know, the truth is, is that Andre and I find ourselves in different parts of the building. <clears> so sometimes, you know, I, I mean, you almost always, I just pray by myself, unless right. it's Friday. Right. And let me ask you, Congressman, we know in politics, 
in politics in every place in the world, there's some dishonesty and no deceit doubt. involved it's in that. How does, your, how, do, how does your grounding in the Islamic faith help you to navigate through some of those things? Well, you know, I, I have, my mind is that politics is no dirtier than any other aspect of life. I mean, the truth is, if you were on a university, there are professors who steal each other's work and plagiarize. If you're a scientist, there are people who take each other's ideas and represent it as their own. If you're in court, there are lawyers who misrepresent the truth. I mean, politics is just another aspect of human endeavor, mm -hmm. and people will try to get an advantage by, by lying, you mm -hmm. know? But I think that um, what you have to do as a person of faith is you have to understand that you have to have faith in the truth, mm -hmm. faith that the truth is going to win out even though in the short term it's tough, mm -hmm. you know? In the short term, though, truth is, can be tough, you know? The truth, it feels like the truth is not your friend, mm -hmm. but, some, but you still have to stick with it and endure it, and that's a matter of faith. That's a matter of belief uh, in God and a matter of, of faith that the truth is the best thing and is gonna win out, and, and that's just the way that it is because some pe sometimes People don't want to hear the truth, and sometimes they don't recognize it as the truth. They got their own truth that they want to believe in. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in politics, the toughest thing is not necessarily the truth, is truth or lies, though. The tougher thing is trying to balance a diverse number of interests mm -hmm. that, um, that seem irreconcilable, mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. I mean, it's four or five groups of people, all who have a legitimate point of view, and to try to come up with a solution that meets the need of all or displeases all equally, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, in the United States, uh, we have a subprime mortgage crisis. Mm -hmm. And on the one, what is the solution? One solution is for the government to uh, take money from its treasury to buy up some of these houses so that uh, they don't uh, cause an eyesore to the neighborhood so people can live in them. But of course, there are other people who would say, wait a minute, for the government to spend that kind of money might actually um, be, have, I'll have the effect of driving up my taxes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So here are people who have legitimate interests, want to stop the bleed on the houses and, and, and help the neighborhood stabilize. And on the other hand, um, people who don't want to spend government money that they don't think is necessary. And so how do we balance the interests? These are the tougher problems of politics. Right. You know, and of course, the other tough problem of politics is that in American politics, uh, in order to run for office, you have to run a campaign. And campaigns cost money. Mm -hmm. Money for TV time, money for staff, money to, to run your campaign. And the expense of these things allows people who have a lot of money to support the candidates they want. Now, sometimes these people don't have the best interests of the average citizen in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem, you know. Uh, that distorts our political reality, mm -hmm. you know. And sometimes I believe that the, you know, uh, that you know, there's you know, weapons manufacturers, uh, they don't make money if there's peace out there, right? Right, right? And so, you know, that so maybe you know, you have some politicians who distort the dangers and threats around the world because it, you know, that's what their that's what their paymasters want them to say, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but of course, you know, these are all difficult issues to sort out and you know we have to be careful and make sure that when we make decisions that they are right for the American people, right for uh, people of the whole world and aren't distorted by you know political donations. Right. Now Congressman you're a lawyer and what motivated you to go into the field of law and was the fact that you're a Muslim any hindrance to you practicing law? Well, you know, I'm more of a lawyer than I am a congressman. I mean, I was mm -hmm. a lawyer for 16 years, and I've been a congressman for about 16 months. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm much more comfortable in a courtroom than in a Congress, mm -hmm. the halls of Congress. But, you know, uh, what motivated me to go to law school? Well, uh, fighting for justice. You know, I grew up in a family where the issue of civil rights and full inclusion of everybody was a big deal. You know, my grandfather was organizing black voters in the South in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, they burned cross in front of their house in, in Louisiana and, and rolled.